Morning to you. We're at Kingsway Fire Station in Derby. You can see the members of Red Watch are just about to tackle this simulated house fire here, setting up with their breathing apparatus, getting the hoses ready to go in. Now, what chief fire officers say is a sprinkler fitted in every room would be like having a firefighter in every room. And this sort of scenario, where a house fire gets to an extent where lives are at risk and a fire really takes hold, would be a thing of the past. The fire that killed six children at their home in Derby last month took hold despite the house being fitted with a working smoke alarm. Fire chiefs have long campaigned for a change in the law, calling for sprinklers to be installed in all new homes. To prove their effectiveness, the head of Derbyshire's service staged this demonstration last winter. It's a mock-up of a child's bedroom. One room is fitted with sprinklers, the other has none. A fire is set in both. Flames are rolling up the curtain and the building is starting to burn. The room is starting to burn. The protected room is doused within minutes and the flames disappear. Next door, the contrast is stark as the blaze destroys the room and potentially spreads to the rest of the building. Look at the difference now. Minimal damage with sprinklers, complete destruction without. You've got a very observable message. Chris Ennis is heading the Chief Fire Officer's sprinklers campaign. He says we should follow the lead of countries such as Canada. It took 25 years for them to experience zero fire deaths after fitting sprinklers. If we wait for that 25 years, we will see something in the region of 8,000 people die and over 185,000 people injured in homes before we decide we've got a problem, we need to do something. It sounds so compelling, so why doesn't it happen? House builders say they aren't against them in principle, just that it's another cost and we're very short of new homes being constructed anyway. Right, John, I'll show you where it is. Yeah, can't even see it. No, you won't see it. That's as much as you can see. It's not intuitive, it's a lovely bit of machinery, and as far as I'm concerned, it's 100% effective. In this sheltered housing block in Sheffield, sprinklers have been fitted to a pre-existing building, a far more expensive option, but done here at a cost of just over £1,100 per flat. I can go to bed at evenings now, get in my bed, Go to sleep, no worries, knowing that I'm not going to get fried. The most I'm going to get is soaked. Well, this is how they work. The water pipe is connected here. This decorative plate on the front is attached by solder. That will melt at around 60 degrees, and the front plate will pop off to expose the sprinkler head. This smaller plate then, which keeps the valve shut, will go at around 70 degrees. That opens the valve, and the water squirts out under pressure. In Wales, the law is changing and the fire service wants the rest of the UK to follow suit. It is, officers say, a matter of life and death. Well, back at the fire station in Derby and Kingsway, you can see the crews just preparing to go in to tackle the blaze inside. And of course, at that point, that's an extremely hazardous environment for firefighters. Let's talk to the chief fire officer, Sean Frayne. Uh, it seems like a no-brainer. What sort of feedback are you getting from ministers? Why isn't this compulsory? Well, unfortunately, the fire minister doesn't appear to be supporting our campaign for domestic sprinklers, um, whereas everybody else in the local government association and chief fire officers association is saying that it's something that should be in place to ensure the safety of people within our communities. As you can see, the fire behind us is at a high level and people in that property would either be deceased now or would be severely injured. And the fitting of domestic sprinklers would drive that fire that you can see down to the size of a waste paper bin or indeed fully extinguish it, allowing people in the premise to escape safely. All right, Sean Frey, thank you very much indeed for talking to us this morning. You see firefighters now inside the building of this uh, simulated house fire. And as I say, uh, a hazardous environment for them. Campaign for sprinklers, the argument is, of course, a compelling one, but has to be balanced always against cost. Thank you. Morning to you, Susanna. Yeah, you can see members of Red Watch here are going through some drills this morning. This is their firehouse. A fire's been set in there to simulate a very serious fire in a domestic house. 
very possibly people trapped inside. And what chief fire officers are saying is that if sprinklers were fitted in homes, it would never even get to this extent. The fire would be dealt with at a much earlier stage. They say it's like having a firefighter in every room in the house. And you can just see the crews getting ready to go in through the door there to tackle the fire from the inside. This, of course, the most hazardous part for any firefighter's job, and they will, of course, only go in if they think that there are people trapped inside. Uh, let's talk to the Chief Fire Officer of Derbyshire, Sean Frayne. Presumably the only reason this isn't happening, and it sounds like a no-brainer, is the cost. It would be too expensive to fit them. That appears to be the only excuse that we're being given as to why sprinklers should not be fitted in all domestic dwellings uh, that are newly built. I think it's an extremely poor excuse. Uh, based on the fact of the life of the home that the sprinklers are put in. And if you factor in a cost of between £1,000 and £2,000 per home over its entire life, that is not a high price to be paid for somebody to be able to survive if there is a fire in their home. And you say that it's like a firefighter in every room. You, you, you're pretty much, well, you can't guarantee it, but, but you're saying deaths with sprinklers fitted would be very, very unlikely. Is that right? Absolutely. Statistically, nationally, um, throughout the world, should I say, um, people are not dying in homes where sprinklers are fitted. Uh, we've lost 388 people nationally between 2010 and 11. But that figure would come down massively if sprinklers are fitted in new builds. Sean Frayne, thank you very much indeed for talking to us about this this morning. So, a serious issue as you can see. Back to you in the studio. Morning to you, Billy. Keep relighting it, of course. Good training for Red Watch this morning. We're at Kingsway at Fire Station in the centre of Derby. You can see the crews just going in there. Of course, what this is, this training establishment here, is uh, a replica of a house. It's their uh, firehouse. They've set the fire inside, and this is how they train the crews to go into. You can see them just cooling down the door before they open the door and actually go in to tackle the blaze. Of course, one of, if not the most hazardous aspects of a firefighter's job but it wouldn't happen if sprinklers were fitted in homes. In fact, chief fire officers say it's like having a firefighter in every room in your house. You can just see the two firefighters there waiting to go into the building. They've got the hose over their shoulder. They've cooled the door down. Uh, they're wearing their breathing apparatus on the back, of course. A smoke-filled room, as you can see, extremely, extremely hot in there. And this, as I say, one of the most hazardous aspects of their job. They will only go into a building like this, of course, if lives are at risk. Let's bring in Derbyshire's Chief Fire Officer, uh, Sean Frayne. What sort of response have you had from the government, from ministers, when you've been telling them how important you believe sprinklers are? Well, in reality, ministers are telling us that uh, there is no cost-benefit in actually installing sprinklers in the home. And I think that's a very poor excuse to put uh, this life safety device down to money. What we need to be doing is ensuring that this cost is spread over the life of the home. The home actually outlives the occupant. And what we can do is a few thousand pound investment ensures the safety of that home and the occupants in it for its entire lifetime. That, to me, ensures that the money just fades into insignificance. Is it belt and braces compared to smoke alarms? It's much better than smoke alarms. A smoke alarm is extremely good. It raises awareness. It alerts people in the premise that there is a possible uh, problem with a fire. However, a sprinkler not only alerts people, it actually starts to suppress the fire and on the majority of occasions will extinguish it. If that room that you can see behind us was uh, your typical domestic house, you would find that a fire of that nature would never, ever arise. The sprinkler would contain it. All right, Sean Frayne, thank you very much indeed and thanks to your... Cruise. Uh, compelling demonstration, really. You can get a good sense, even from this distance, feel a bit of heat, smell the smoke. It really is a very unpleasant environment for these guys to have to work in. Back to you.